What's up crew members? Thanks for stopping by to check out this quick engineering class tutorial for Pulsar Lost Colony. Right now on the screen, I have the description that Leafy Games has for their engineer class. Go ahead and read that, pause the video. When you're done, unpause the video and we'll get started. In order to start this tutorial, I'm gonna have to be the captain because I'm a one person crew. So let me go ahead and select that. I promise it's gonna be about engineering. Here we are on the bridge. I'll close out this transmission. And we're gonna go ahead and head over to the engineering station, which is at the back right of the bridge on the Intrepid. Now here we are, we know it's the engineering station because we've got the reactor panel here, the jump computer on the right, and we got the auxiliary reactor configuration on the left. Now let me introduce you to your number one main job when nothing is really going on. It's gonna be the jump computer. You are responsible for initiating the jump prep. So when your captain asks you to, you go ahead and hit this big button here on the right and you initiate the jump prep. When you do, it's gonna take power from your reactor and I'll demonstrate that right now by showing you what the reactor screen is. So here's your reactor screen, the temperature's at the top, then you have four conduits underneath it. You have engineering, science, shields, and weapons. We'll get to what all those do in a moment. And then the most important one down here, total usage in relation to the temperature going up here at the top. If the temperature gets to 3000, you start losing stability on your reactor. And if the stability goes all the way to zero, well, you go into emergency cooldown and you're not gonna be able to do anything for a few seconds. And worse than that, if you take off the safety override, you could blow up the ship. So it's your job as the engineer to make sure you manage this temperature and limit and expand the power usage of your reactor. Now remember I, so now remember I told you when you hit the initiate jump prep, something's gonna happen. So let's go check that out. If your captain says, get ready for warp, initiate jump prep, you hit the button. So a jump calculation starts, you see the progress bar there. A warp drive charge starts, you see the progress bar there. And you see the whole charging bar in full at the top here. Finalized jump data will be the last one once both of these bars meet the end. Notice that the engineering conduit is taking energy and the science lab is taking more energy to do these calculations. And there's our final bar. And now we are ready to jump. The only thing stopping us is we don't have a pilot and the pilot hasn't aligned to our target for the next sector. So it's gonna be up to the pilot to align the ship to the next center, this, the next sector. And what you'll have to do, this button will say jump and you go ahead and engage. That's gonna be your main job. If nothing's happening, sorry, it's not that riveting, but chances are along the way, you're going to get into a lot of battles and we're going to do a lot more interesting stuff. So let me introduce you now to these two panels over here and how they work in tandem with each other. So on the right, we've got the reactor panel up here at the top left is the name of the reactor that you're using. It can go all the way up to 3000. And after 3000, you start losing core stability. Again, I told you there's four conduits underneath and then the total usage down here. I'd like you to take note that look how much energy the science lab is taking right now. This is for sensors. And this is equivalent to how much total usage you are on the reactor. Now, what you'll mostly be doing here is juggling or limiting the power output of these conduits. All you have to do is click in the bar, drag left and drag right. Now notice I'm gonna do this with the science lab. Look what happens to the total usage when I bring this down. Well, the total usage of the reactor goes down. I expand it and the total usage goes up and they're equal. Now, you can actually give your total uses bar some more oomph, and you can do that with the auxiliary reactor configurations. Now, I'll go over the, I'll go over what all of these do in another tutorial, but for now, we're just gonna shut them all off, and I want you to pay attention to how, bigger, how much bigger this bar gets. Now we're all off, and look, the total usage now actually surpasses the weapons. We have more power to allocate to our four conduits. Let's turn them back on. We actually have 7,200 megawatts of more power to allocate to our four conduits. And we turn everything back on. And now we're back to underneath the weapons bar here. We don't have as much bandwidth. If you need some extra power, there's a really cool button up here. It's a little dangerous though. It's the overclock button. When you click it, check out the power output. It goes pretty significantly high. It lowered weapons down to like 75%. The only problem with expanding that is, well, you're cooking the reactor and the temperature is going up. But as the engineer, you do have a remedy. So we're gonna let the reactor cook for a little bit. We're gonna turn around and go over to the coolant pump controls. So here's our coolant reserves, this top bar here. Here's the pump control and let's turn it on. It's gonna put it on low. Let's put that AC on low there and notice that the temperature of the reactor is going down. Now for a really, really hot reactor and for emergency use, go ahead and put that on high and let's slam that temperature all the way down to the bottom, which we just did. However, 
Don't forget that you've turned the pump on because you will still be wasting your coolant reserves if you don't turn off the pump control. And now I'll turn off the overclock because we're not really going anywhere and notice how all the conduits moved again. So that's gonna be your job mostly here on the bridge when you're juggling power. If things get serious, we're gonna have to head down to engineering. But before we do, let me show you the other panel right here. We have the jump fuel capsules. This is important, keep your captain up to date because if the fuel capsules reach zero, well, you're not going anywhere. You can't do a jump anymore. Also, if they reach zero, you will not be able to program science and their programs. And we'll get into that in just a bit. If it does get to zero, you're gonna have to ask your captain, hey, should I turn on the distress signal? Which you do right here. I highly recommend when you toggle through these, you use your faction's signature and then turn that on. Hopefully a, uh, a ship will warp into the sector and they'll sell you some fuel, but at a premium because they know you're stranded. So don't run out of fuel capsules. And now let's head down to engineering. Okay, here we are in engineering and let's see, we got a couple familiar panels. There's duplicates of these panels. Here's the reactor configuration, the auxiliary reactor configuration. Here's our fusion reactor and then here's your coolant reserves. On the other side here, we have another panel. That was your jump. If you need to jump the ship from down here, you still can. Again, it's the Intrepid class. Now here's your job down here. One of the most important jobs is to manually charge the science programs, which is this big unit over here on the right. And what I'm gonna show you is when you hit the load fuel button here, you load a fuel capsule into the manual program charging station. And when the science officer asks for the charge, you just gotta pull this lever right here and you send the charge to the science programs. You don't have to know what they are. Just know that when the science officer requests them or the captain tells you to, you charge those programs and notice the fuel capsules are now down to 19 because we sent a whole one capsule up there and you can go ahead and keep pulling this if they need to keep charging except it gets expensive because you're using those fuel capsules so this is going to be another primary job when you head down to engineering the other one it has something to do with game mechanics we're going to go ahead and this is our engineering conduit we're going to go ahead and just you know do some damage here i don't recommend doing this but uh see now it's kind of hurt bring out your repair gun left click and now you're repairing your conduit. Pretty simple. When your conduit takes damage, if you're in battle, if they use a missile, this place is gonna be on fire. And what you wanna do is grab your fire extinguisher, put out the fires like so, left clicking, get out your repair gun again, repair engineering, and you should be good. Now all your crew members do have a repair gun, so if you definitely need to repair in a hurry, you can call for some backup and repair these much faster. And now let's go to your secondary job down here, which will be to reboot the system if you've got crippling viruses on the ship. So this is how you do that. The scary thing is you're gonna have to turn the main power off. And that's with the lever all the way to the left. This is gonna be a process, but if you do it quick enough, it won't be too damaging and work with your captain or someone with eyes outside to make sure you do it at an opportune time. So, let's say you have a lot of viruses, they're crippling the ship, you gotta turn the power down and flush them out of the system. Throw the main power lever down. We are now powered off. When everything's powered off, start booting the system by lifting the first lever. Then, this is how you purge the viruses, because now you gotta boot the OS. So we'll click this button here, once that button gets all the way to the top, now we can pull the second lever. And now the system interface is back online. We'll prime the warp core and go ahead and lift up the third lever. We are back and powered up. Shields are up. We're good to go. Last thing that needs to happen though, you'll notice that your computer screens are out. And this will be the science officer's job, but in the science lab where the main computer is, it's not just in the science lab, it's also on the bridge. You can go to this computer right here and manual override, press that button and computers are now booted back up. All right, folks, I just cut back to engineering. That's gonna be it. In another tutorial, I will show you how to eject the reactor core. We'll go over auxiliary configs and other cool things you can do as the engineer and things to be on the lookout. Like and subscribe to the channel. Go through my video playlist because I'll have the bunch of tutorials over there for Pulsar Lost Colony. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the ship.